Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I, I never really told you why I started saying that. I just started saying it one Sunday and do so pretty much every Sunday. Uh, I became convinced at some point that we need to know that we are invited here. That it's not just a, a mistake or a mistake, just a, a happenstance. It's not just uh, something that we happen to do, but God has made this this space and that we come here at his invitation by his love and everything we do is walking in his love he has given us great grace and great peace and this morning I'm very excited to, to start a new series of lessons with you we, we wrapped up Nehemiah I, I think we got a good start into our 2022 and this year we're going to start a new series of lessons I'm very I'm very excited about this series I'm just calling this the Christian basics just the, the Christian basics what what do we do uh, what do we believe how do we do it here why do we do it these are kind of core and central things to who we are and where we're going as a people here at Central I don't know if you've ever heard Andy Stanley before. He's, he's kind of a leadership guru. Uh, he also leads a church over in Atlanta, North Point. It's a fairly large uh, church. Uh, but, but he has a lot of leadership materials out there for church leaders or just business leaders. And, and I love what he says. If we can think of this church as a team, and, and we really are in the truest sense, we are a team for God. Uh, Andy Stanley says this about great teams, that they have great Great clarity about what, how, and why. What we're doing, how we do it here, and why we do it in the first place. And so I think that speaks a lot to this series, that if we would be a healthy and a vibrant team, if we would go further, faster as a team, it's going to take having some great clarity around what we do, what we believe, how we do it here, and why we do it the way that we do it here. And so that's kind of what this, this series is about. It's all about getting clarity. It's all about pulling together around the same thing. And, and moving forward uh, together. And so in, in my mind, this is kind of a, it's a big series. It really is. It's, uh, we're going to do a lot of heavy lifting together uh, in, in this series. And, uh, and so because of that, I just want to take a few moments, a little more than usual, and kind of orient you to a couple of things about this series. Uh, just to be very clear about some things. Um, clear about what we're saying in this series. Clear about what we're not saying in this series series, and I think it will help us to move through a rather weighty series together in a better way. And that really kind of gets to the, the first thing that I want to be clear about as we orient to this series, that a series about defining the basics and getting very clear about some things has a better than usual chance of ruffling some feathers. Uh, just, I just want to call that out on the front end. Uh, it is very easy to get up here and generically preach about Christianity. God loves you. Uh, well, you need to give your life to Jesus because He died for you. He's for you. He will go with you. He is going to walk with you, walk with Him. You can say that in any church in Fayette, right? Amen, amen. It's, it's very easy to preach Christian moral lessons. You shouldn't steal. You shouldn't kill people. You shouldn't lie. You should love your neighbor. Uh, you should love God. You should uh, read your Bible and pray. I mean, preach that in any church in Fayette and everybody says amen, right? That's, that's easy stuff. Um, but when we really get down to defining some things with some clarity, uh, define baptism. What exactly is it? What exactly is it accomplishing? Why exactly do you do it? And, and what exactly does the Bible say about it? Or the Lord's Supper. You know, what exactly are we doing in the Lord's Supper? And, and how often exactly should we do it? And, and how should we do it? Uh, women's roles, tithing, uh, salvation, denominationalism. Uh, you really start 
start putting some clear definitions on these things, and that's where people start saying, well, I don't exactly agree with exactly how you said that, and, and the tension comes in, and, and so that's, that's what we're about to do. Does that mean that we shouldn't talk about these topics in the church? Of course not. If we can't talk about Christianity in the church, we've got a bigger problem than, than we might realize. So this is exactly where we need to talk about this stuff. Uh, Paul, you read Paul's letters. He tackles issues like this all the time in the churches. And uh, the, the goal is, is not to, to avoid the topics. The, the goal is to talk about them as a family with mutual love for our brothers and sisters. Even as we know on the outset, we're not going to all see the, the issues the exact same way. It's okay. We're a family. I just want to call that out on the front end. The uh, second thing I really want to be clear about from the outset is the goal here is unity, not uniformity. Unity, but not uniformity. Um, we have an amazing and diverse church family. Amen? I, I mean, I brag to my preacher friends about our church family, how amazing and diverse our church family is. We've got people here from all kinds of backgrounds, uh, from a Baptist background, from a Methodist background, an unchurched background, a Church of Christ background, Presbyterian background, Church of God, Pentecostal. It, all across the board, it is really cool. I, I mean, I do. I truly brag to my preacher friends about the kind of church. That, and, and somebody might say, I'm not from a Baptist back from. I, I am a Baptist. Cool. All right. Yeah, that's, that's all right. You know, that's who we are, right? We know this. And, and the goal in this series is not to undo anybody's background, not to flatten out our diversity in here. I, I just really want to be clear about that uh, from the, from the get-go. You may completely disagree with something I say in one of these lessons up ahead. And I don't know how many there are, uh, 8, 10, 12. We'll, we'll see when we get there. But the goal of these lessons is, is not that. Um, I know nobody in this room thinks this way. But somebody might hear something and, and think, well, I don't agree with all that. D does that mean I belong here? And I would just say, you know this, that would just be like one, my little Abigail saying, well, I don't agree exactly with what Dad said. Do I belong in this family? Yeah, family is family. Family is family. And you know that. I'm not telling you anything new here. Um, that there are some topics that are going to be more important than others. If we don't see the same way about uh, the Lord's Supper, that's, that's one thing. Uh, if, if you don't agree that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who was raised from the dead, I'd, I'd like to talk to you more about that. Um, not all topics are created the same, but the goal here, the goal here is for us to be on the same page and have unity around some things. This is what we do here and why we do it here. Uh, even though we don't expect everybody to be completely uniform in their beliefs and their preferences. Because we are diverse. Unity is not the same thing as uniformity, you understand. And the last thing I just want to say and be very clear about before we get started is, you need to know that these lessons will be biblically based as interpreted by Jordan Gray. And, and y'all know this, I'm going to do my best to cover these lessons with the conviction that the Scripture is the final authority. We found everything that we do and believe, why we do it, how we do it here, in God's Word. But you understand, it's, it's me up here doing my personal best to read and interpret these passages. And if you got ten different preachers up here, even ten different preachers within the churches of Christ, you'd get t ten different lessons on, on these matters. Uh, we just don't all say the same thing. I, I can't present these lessons and tell you this is what Central believes. Because if I was to say, we, we need to switch seats. I need to sit down and get all of you up here to tell me what Central believes, because you're Central, right? A diverse group of people uh, believing a diverse set of things about the, the Bible. Uh, we, we are led by three shepherds. Uh, we, we, are, we move under the direction of three overseers years. They haven't given me a script for these either. Uh, I, I count on them. If I ever say anything out of line that I, I trust, they'll tell me about that and we'll talk about that. 
Uh, but at the same time, they've, they've given me some trust to, to try to move through these lessons in the best way that I can. So I'm going to do my best. Jordan Gray is going to do my best to define our faith and practices here as we follow the Bible. And I, and I pray that the Holy Spirit would be moving in every single lesson. Uh, but you understand at the end of the day, it's me. I've got to take responsibility for what I believe and what I do. And you got to take responsibility for what you believe and what you do. And I think we all are on the same page on these things. So, I hope that these lessons stimulate some discussion. If you ever have any comments or questions, let me know and let's, let's talk about these things. I think that'd be really cool that, that we really move together on these things. But, but here we are. We're ready to dive in. So, so this morning, there, there's, there's only one good starting place in my mind for a series like this, and that is the main thing. We got to make sure that we keep the main thing the main thing. Because, as I said, in Christianity, there's some things that are a little bit more important than others, and the Scripture really lays out several things that are the main thing. You've got to keep these things the main thing. If we get the main thing wrong, even if we get some other things right, we're wrong. Understand, if we get the main thing wrong, we are wrong. So let's talk about the main thing and make sure we get the main thing right. And, and several different passages I want to look at with you. Uh, because I looked through the New Testament for main thing passages. Passages where the Apostle or, or Jesus says, this, this one was really important. This one is above all. This one is of first importance. This one is big. And there's several. And, and I just want to move through some of these briefly. And, and then there was one thing that kept on popping out over and over and over again. We'll settle on that and we'll talk a lot about that. But Hebrews 6 is the first passage that I came to. Hebrews 6 verses 1 through 2. It talks about the elementary doctrine of Christ. Uh, literally in the Greek, it's the beginning word about Christ or the beginning word of Christ. Uh, I like the way the message puts it. Peterson says this, the preschool finger painting exercise about Christ. It's the, the, the stuff that, it doesn't necessarily mean these are the most important things, but it's the things that you'd expect every Christian to know. Really the basics, the basics that, that we need to make sure we, we have a foundation of. Actually, Actually, the point of this passage is we need to move beyond the basics. We need to mature, but, but these are the basics. Uh, what are the basics? He says repentance, faith, baptisms, laying on of hands, which might strike us strange as a basic. We don't talk about that much. Uh, resurrection and judgment. Those are the six basics here in this scripture. Again, maybe not the most important things, but the most basic things. Every Christian should have a concept of these six things. Another first things passage, James 5. James 5 and verse 12. James uses this phrase, above all. When anybody says above all, that sounds like a main thing kind of passage. James says, above all, we need to be people of the truth. Of truth. Uh, he says specifically, don't be the kind of people that have to swear and take oaths all the time, as though you're just you're trying to convince people that you're truthful. Well, I swear, I take this oath, you know I'm telling the truth. He says, don't do that. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Above all, be people of the truth. That when you say things, people know you're being truthful because you love truth. You're a person of truth. Above all, Christians need to be people of truth. Another main thing passage, Matthew 6 and verse 33. Jesus said to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. The main aim of your life is to be right with God and to work in His kingdom. That's the main thing. And we could get more specific about that. What exactly does that mean to be right with God and to work in His kingdom? You could fill in the blanks a lot there, but, but as far as principles go, this is the guiding principle for the Christian life. 
get right with God, work in His kingdom. That's the main thing. Of course, the Pharisees were terrible at keeping the main thing the main thing. They loved to major in the minors and minor in the majors. Matthew 23, uh, Jesus gets on to them about that very thing. He says, you're really good at these secondary issues, but you forget the main things. Uh, specifically, you're good at tithing. Man, you tithe so perfectly. You go out in your garden and you count your plants and you give the tenth one. I mean, you're, you're perfect with the tithing, but you've forgotten the main things, the weightier matters of the law. Justice and mercy and faithfulness does not matter if you give perfectly to God, if you are not a merciful person, if, if you don't seek and pursue justice, if you're not faithfully loving your God and your heart belonging to Him, doesn't matter if you get all these other things just perfect. Got to keep the main thing the main thing. And here we come down to the main, main things. 1 Corinthians 15. We read this at the table just a few moments ago. This is a big one. Paul says, I want to remind you about the gospel. Because I delivered this message to you as of first importance. It's the main thing. That Jesus died for your sins. That Jesus was buried, but Jesus was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And then Jesus appeared to his people. The main thing, the gospel, you stand, you are saved in this good news. This is first important stuff. The gospel of Jesus Christ is of utmost importance to our faith and our practices as Christians. And I would say it is the main thing as it relates to our beliefs. Not only that we believe it in here, but that we trust it in here. And that it transforms us from the inside out. That we know and we love the gospel and we receive the gospel. And then we become gospel people as His Spirit works it out into us. It, it will affect everything that you do. It won't just affect your eternal salvation where you're with God forever because of the gospel. That's great. That's amazing. But it will start to flow through you now. Through your actions and your behaviors. As you receive the gospel, you start becoming a different kind of person. And that gets to the main thing that I found in the most passages in the New Testament. I just want to read them for you because this gospel will make you a person of love. 1 Corinthians 13.13 13. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. 1 Peter 4, 7 through 8. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore be controlled, self-controlled, and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Colossians 3, verse 12 through 14. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all, above all, above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. In Matthew 22, Jesus wraps it all together this way. Because one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Or as he said in Mark, there is no other commandment greater than these. The main thing is that you know and believe the gospel. That you receive the fact that Jesus loved you. God loved you so much that, that he came down off of his throne and, and he took on this broken flesh 
and, and He showed you Himself. He revealed God to the people as He walked with them in love. And then He went to that cross knowing our sinfulness, knowing that we had rejected Him, that we had walked away from Him. He loved us so much that He pursued us and He went and He took all our sins on Himself so that we could be clean and that we could be with Him in heaven. For he loved you that much that, that even as you were hating Him, He was loving and sacrificing Himself for you. And we receive that gospel and it just completely undoes all of our wiring. It, it, it just, it, it so overwhelms us that if someone loved us like that, who ought we to be? And His love begins to flow through us. And we start interacting with the people around us, our brothers and our sisters in love. But then we go beyond them and we, we interact with our neighbors in love. He would even lead us to interact with our enemies in love. His love just goes all the way out through us and it remakes us as we receive the gospel and we begin to love. That's the main thing. I don't deserve it. He loved me. Now His love changes me and it leads me to love. The main thing is love. Jesus says the main thing is love. Love God. Love your neighbor. Paul says above all, love one another. The love, it's, it's the greatest one. It's the one that remains. The greatest of these is love. Peter says above all, love covers a multitude of sins. So keep loving each other earnestly. There is no greater commandment than to love. That's the main thing. There's a recurring tragedy in the church, and God forbid it should ever rest here at Central, where people love their beliefs and their practices so much that they go to war over them, and they do not love their brothers and their sisters, much less their neighbors, much, much less their enemies. When we study the Lord's Supper, I, I want you to make the commitment right now that we're going to love each other. Can you imagine, hey, we're going to love each other as we study God's Word. Let's, let's make that commitment right now. When we study the worship music of the church, let's make this commitment right now that when we do so, we're not going to love our beliefs or our preferences so much as we love each other. And we're going to study together in love. That sounds radical, doesn't it? But that's what we're going to do here. I want you to make that commitment in your hearts right now because that's the main thing. And what does that mean, to love each other? What does it mean that we're going to love each other as we study together? Well, let's go for 1 Corinthians 13 again. Paul kind of spells it out a little bit more. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 4. He said that love is patient and kind. We are going to be patient and kind as we study the Bible. We're not going to get anxious and snippy. We're going to be patient and kind as we study God's Word. He said, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. We're not going to think we're the stuff when we get it right. We're not going to get jealous over others when we think they get it righter. We're not going to do that. Love doesn't envy. Love doesn't boast. Love is not arrogant or rude. We're not going to be arrogant or rude. We are all servants, none better than the other. There's no place for arrogance, no place for rudeness before God. He said, love does not insist on its own way. Love means we need to yield sometimes. Love is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing. Have you ever heard anybody rejoice almost at pointing the finger at the other people that aren't as right as we are when it comes to the matters of the Christian faith. When love doesn't rejoice at wrongdoing. It rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. We're going to believe the best in each other. We're going to bear with diversity in our unity. Love hopes all things. The path forward is bright because the path forward belongs to God. And we are just all children gratefully moving towards Him together. We have a great hope. Love endures all things. 
We're going to write this passage on our hearts because this is the main thing that we have all signed up for. Above all, we're going to love because we can get everything else right, but if we get love wrong, we're wrong. I, I want y'all to repeat after me, as a matter of fact. Let's, let's, let's say this all together. If we get love wrong, we're wrong. That's great. <laughs> we're going to get love right. And, and central, I know I didn't even have to tell you to make that commitment. This is a commitment that you have already made. It's, it's why we fell in love with you in the first place. Your commitment to love first is a big reason why I'm standing here today. We just need to say it every now and then. We just need to remind ourselves that this is the main thing. Because I, I do, I think it's so important that we have this series and we really get some clarity on some issues. But I know the history of the church where this has gone off into a not loving kind of study before. And uh, that's not going to happen here. We're going to love. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. If you would please pray with me. Father God, we love you only because you loved us first. Father, you taught us how to love. You taught us what love is. When we look to our Savior, when we look to our King, to our Teacher, to our Master, Jesus Christ, we understand what love is. By your Spirit moving in us and opening our eyes and giving us wisdom, we see what love is. <laughs> And Father, we are so grateful that not only do you show us love, but you put your spirit in our hearts and you move us to be loving. You show us who you are and you move us to be more like you. And we are so, so grateful. Father, we think your truth is very, very important. We are thankful for your truth. We are thankful that you teach us. Father, we want to know more about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. What it means to be a church, a family, an assembly, worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Father, I am so grateful for your word and I'm excited about the lessons ahead of us. Father, I pray that you would breathe your love into every single one of them. That you would breathe your love into your people as we talk about these things together. Father, we're thankful for the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, even as we are a family of very different people, diverse people. Father, you have painted a colorful portrait here of yourself with all the different colors, all the different shades and perspectives. Father, you are beautiful. You have a beautiful people. And Father, we just pray that you would knit us together with what is common, your spirit. That your spirit would be in each and every one of us, that we would move together as a family, seeking your truth, loving you, loving each other, showing your praise and glory to the world around us, and calling many more sons and daughters into your family. Father, we love you. And we just pray that you would make love the primary definition of who we are as a people. That we would be a people of love first. Because we are a people who have been touched by the gospel. And so, Father, as a people, we come and we pray to you together. In the words of Jesus. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And amen.